Which is the best new quarterback running back duo in the NFL? I really wanted to say C.J. Stroud just to upset you guys all because <laughs> I think C.J. Stroud is that good that maybe you put him with whoever. But I had to be honest, and the answer is obviously Jalen Hurts and Saquon Barkley, in yeah. part because they're both really good, talented rushers. Saquon, or excuse me, uh, Jalen can pass the ball. But it's the situation that he's going into where they have – one of the best, if not the best, offensive line in football, even losing Jason Kelsey. Kelsey and they have two legitimate number one X-type receivers on the outside. So, like, that rushing attack, it's a very pick-your-poison type of offense. There's nothing. They're going to have an advantage somewhere, and I'd be much more concerned if I was an offensive – excuse me, a defensive coordinator of trying to make a game plan to do something with Jalen Hurts, Saquon Barkley, uh, and both of those receivers – in their O line, it's good. So it's it's a tough spot there. I'm going to take the Ravens because I love the combination. I think obviously uh, Hen uh, Henry's got a chance to get to a Super Bowl. I think he's going to be very motivated, getting some new digs. Gets a chance to play with um, obviously Lamar in that city that lost the AFC Championship game. They'd be very motivated. We all know Lamar needs to win some playoff games, but his running ability will help too. I love the combination. Remember, the Eagles had a good running back in Swift, and they got to a Super Bowl two years ago without Barkley. The Ravens haven't done that yet. So Lamar and Henry have a chance to do something for the franchise and the combination and this present team that has not been done, and that's get to a next level. The Eagles have already done that. So I'll take the combination in Baltimore. So here's my compliment. You look very lovely today. Thank you. But you're wrong. <laughs> so, very good. So, and here's why. Because who's going to be more motivated than a running back who felt like he wasn't loved? Imagine. You're saying, I want to be here. I love you. And the person is like, yeah, we love you too, but yeah, this time has run its course. And then somebody next door is like, hey, hey, hey. Come over here. We got you. Look at this roster. Look at this team. Look at these weapons. You're going to be loved here. And the Eagles gave them the money to show this, these guarantees say how much we value your skill set. The skill set that they value is the fact that he is a home run hitter. This is a guy that averaged a, almost 100 scrimmage yards per game with the Giants. Doggy, <laughs> you know what the Giants O-line has been looking like the last. And the Eagles have a good one, as Tom said. So when you think about... I understand, Derrick Henry, you're going to pair one of the strongest, most physical running backs in the game to Lamar Jackson, one of, if not the best running quarterback of all time. Debate, you know, there's a debate there. But I get, I get why Baltimore would be your choice. But if you thought for a second longer, you would say Jalen Hurts, Saquon Barkley, strongest squads in America together, right? Paired with, as Dominique said, A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith. And we never talk about Dallas Goddard. Yeah. We never, we've forgotten about him he because. Too. Exactly. And the Eagles have so many weapons that uh, where's the weakness on that team? The, the, um, the, I, I'm still tempted. C.J. Stroud, we don't, know how, himself. <laughs> we don't know how good he's going to be. What he did last year was great. So Joe Mixon, Joe Mixon is not as good as Saquon Barkley. That's fine. Or, um, or uh, Derrick Henry. That's fine. But. We do see the return to Tankdale, Nico Collins, in a second year of improvement from possibly the best rookie quarterback that we've had. Uh, and I guess uh, Mahomes was a second year quarterback when he got his right, first well, start. Yep. So I don't, I can't remember off the top of my head someone who, we go back to Dan Marino, someone who entered the league and was clear to us like, oh, he's one of them. Mm -hmm. Adding him into this situation, it doesn't matter what you surround him with. The, the future for him, the ceiling is high. We know what these other guys are. We know Lamar Jackson is the MVP of the league two times. We know that uh, Hurts is the same sort of thing. But that situation down there is interesting. I think it's worth discussing. I still don't think Kimberly and I are right because obviously <laughs> we understand football at, at a level that Mad Dog could never Clearly, get to. Never. <laughs> and it, just and never. Saquon in the offense that he was in, moving into a situation where he is not – Best case scenario, you got one player in the hole to tackle Saquon because everyone else will be accounted for. Saquon has not seen anything like that in his entire football career. Saquon has always been in a situation where the boxes are loaded against mm -hmm. him because he's always been the focal point of the offense. Now he'll be in a situation where the defensive coordinator, when he comes to that game, is going to be like, all right, we got to stop big plays from A.J. We got to make mm -hmm. sure Devontae doesn't do those deep crosses. All right, Jalen Hurts is a great quarterback – Oh, damn it. 
Saquon? <laughs> like, and he's a pass catcher, and he's talented. I think that Derrick Henry doesn't have the same pass catching ability. Break this down for me. When we're talking uh, specifically Lamar versus Jalen Hurts, mm -hmm. would you say Lamar is yeah. much more talented? I wouldn't say. I mean, yeah, I think Lamar's definitely much more talented. He's had more success, and I think more sustained success over a long period of time. We go Lamar versus Hurts. I like Lamar. And, and then what about uh, Henry versus Saquon? Yeah, I like Saquon over Derrick Henry. They're both obviously very good runners. Saquon adds another, another dynamic uh, that uh, Derrick Henry is not really as effective a, a route runner okay. or pass catcher. Well, so the one problem that you have with Hurts, he played great in the Super Bowl. Right. And Lamar has not played well in the playoffs. Which and you Hertz like to went, remind us, yes. Which is which I love to tell you. <laughs> Hurts went to that, you know, played great against Mahomes yeah. two years mm -hmm. ago. Could have won the game. They would have gotten the ball yeah. back. They could have yeah. won the game. I'm looking at this from a plateau standpoint mm -hmm. because the Eagles, this group, has already played in the Super Bowl. Lamar and Henry have not. Right. And I think the addition of Henry gives them a chance mm -hmm. to get to the next step mm -hmm. while the Eagles have already been in the big game. That's the way oh, I look so at it. Oh, so you're not really looking at it as they're actually better. You're How about looking at the common? I'm looking at the franchise scenario. Okay, so who would you pick to go I would, take this go I would still pick the franchise. I'd pick the Ravens over the Eagles to have a better run and a better chance to get to a Super Bowl and a bigger storyline. So which quarterback, Mad Dog, do you feel like is under more pressure? Is it Russell Wilson with the Steelers or Kirk in Atlanta? Plus the fact he took a shot at the Viking coach. O'Connell's a better coach than Morris. He's proven that he's a better coach. And he said, owner, GM, coach, and quarterback. On and now, uh, Morris has got a lot to prove compared to O'Connell, who's a quarterback guru, who's done a very good job. Mm -hmm. Plus, you're getting on the Wolves, who own the Vikings, compared to Arthur Blank, who owns Atlanta. I was, I'm a little surprised. And the GM. I think also the GM was, a, was probably the main one he was talking to because probably. a couple of years ago, um, Kirk Cousins, the GM kind of suggested that Kirk Cousins wasn't going to be the guy. That's yes. Maybe there's something Fun to that. G yes. Maybe the GM. GM. Yeah, maybe the GM's it. got. But I'm a little surprised of how he handled that yeah. because O'Connell is his buddy and he's a mm -hmm. good coach. To me, to me, Cousins has a tremendous amount of pressure on him. We, Russell Wilson had pressure when he went to Seattle. Because that trade Denver. was a huge... Uh, Denver, I'm yeah. sorry, from Seattle. Mm -hmm. That trade was a huge... They gave up a lot to get him. He was making a fortune. Hackett, he was looked at as a savior. That's where the pressure point was for Wilson. Mm -hmm. Now that he hasn't played that great, he goes to Pittsburgh. He's got Tomlin, good organization. It's almost like a house money thing for him. Cousins got paid another $100 million. He got paid an absolute fortune to a franchise that has an old owner... He's 82 years old, Arthur Blank, wants to win, has never won anything, and he is coming off an injury, which is another thing, mm -hmm. who has, as you alluded to yesterday nicely and beat me, with only <laughs> one with only one postseason yes. win. Yes. So to me, I don't think it's even a doubt. Yeah, I mean, I think that they, they have pressure to win uh, a championship or at least make a deep run. I think you're right. But the pressure that I think Russell is probably feeling is entirely different, and I think it's bigger. The pressure is, what's his place going to be in football history? Russell Wilson was like Hall of Fame track player, one of the best players in football. Everyone was saying, let Russ cook. The Seahawks are holding him back. Then he went to this Broncos team that had a good roster, but it seemed like they were positioning themselves to get Aaron Rodgers, and they didn't, so they went with Russell instead, and then he had a horrendous season, which everyone can blame on the coach or blame on everyone else, but Russell also played really poorly. Then, last year, he didn't, it didn't feel like he had a fair chance because it felt like Sean Payton came in there with his mind made up that he was rebuilding this roster, and Russell was one of the problems from the old regime that he was going to move on from. So I do think that there's a tremendous amount of pressure on Russell because it's going to determine how we remember him. Are we going to remember him as someone who had a good run early in his career but really ultimately wasn't all that good or we're we going to remember him as someone who had a great early career went into a debacle that ruined uh the midpoint of his career and then actually came back and resurrected one of the great franchises or not resurrected they're not dead but pushed them one of the great franchises back up to the place where they feel like they belong he's playing for that He's playing for whether he gets a Hall of Fame speech or not or what he's going to say in that Hall of Fame speech. He's playing for a lot more than I think Kirk Cousins is because, as you mentioned, Kirk got paid a bunch of times. He's, he's done those things. And Atlanta, as 
as much as I'm sure Arthur Blank and Falcons fans won a championship, they're not the same as far as the history of the game as the Steelers are. What, what um, Russell can do there means a lot. You know what, Dominique? Yes, ma'am. That is, that's a fair point. That's a smart Don't point. Don't sound so surprised. No, I, I'm going to give you your flowers. Um, how he will be remembered. That is very important. Uh, but, again, <laughs> you're wrong. But <laughs> I just have three questions to prove why you're wrong. Uh, is Russell Wilson the starter in Pittsburgh? Not right now. Okay. Is, but we know Kirk Cousins is, right? Yes. Okay, number two. What are the expectations for the Steelers versus what are the expectations for the Falcons? Steelers win a playoff game. What are the expectations Falcons, for the Falcons? I think also win a playoff game. Just, just a playoff game? That's what, that's what the expectations are when, win you, a Super Bowl. when, you, when you make the splashiest of yeah. splashiest free agent moves to get a quarterback. Yeah. You think so I think the expectations are win a Super Bowl, but I think okay, Kirk Cousins okay. can have. <laughs> there you go. Win a Super Bowl. Thank you. Okay, last question. Um, how much guaranteed money is Kirk Cousins getting? I'm not here to take a quiz. I'm just saying. 100, mil 100 million, right? <laughs> a lot. Yeah. Guaranteed. So, I rest my case. That is why Kirk Cousins, because here's the thing. You're talking about how will Russell be remembered. Kirk Cousins is at a point in his career where he just signed a four-year deal with 100 million guaranteed. He's not trying to leave this game looking like, you know what? Kirk wasn't really the star. His agent was. He's the finesse king of, of the NFL. He's not trying to leave the game like that. Kirk even coming off the Achilles, which I don't think will hinder him as much because he's not like some mobile guy. He's a pocket passer. But he's coming into a situation where it's home, it's family. He's looking at the Vikings like, oh, yeah, they didn't really want me. It felt very much like I was a year to year but I'm better than that. And now he's going to a situation in Atlanta where they're saying, we want you to take us to the promised land of the Super Bowl. Yeah. And that's on his plate. So right. they're, not, they're not bringing I him there the just to win a playoff game. I think the expectations for Kurt are a lot lower. And I think what they've experienced as far as quarterback play has been so bad that they'll be satisfied with Kirk Cousins being good enough to get them that's to the playoffs and winning. Yeah. It's a lot lower because you feel like the team situation, yeah. where you I feel like the, Pittsburgh's right. in a position to actually make a run. If they can plug and play and he can play quarterback well, they can go the distance. But if Kirk plays well, how far do you think Atlanta's even going? Yeah, I think Atlanta can go far if Kirk plays well. I think they can like make what's it far? NFC Championship. I think they can Atlanta. get... Atlanta. I do. I believe... I don't agree with your man Stephen A that it's... Uh, that it, we're overreacting about this move. I think that it's a big enough move and the talent there is important. But I do think that the noise around the Steelers is we got to win a playoff game. Like they're getting tired of Mike Tomlin. That's not what we're hearing in Atlanta. Atlanta is please give us a quarterback. Anybody that can play quarterback for us, Steelers please. They got paying one. paying Russell Wilson nothing. Yeah, I don't there. think that matters. That's different. That's, that's different. When we talk about pressure. A, a, a million two versus a hundred million? It's not the same. The pressure, and we're not talking about the money at this point. The money doesn't matter for either of these guys. Oh, They're money paid. Don't matter. I mean, not for them. But, They're but paid. But the fans, it matters. Yeah, I do. Because a lot of people think that Cousins has been overpaid his whole career anyway. So this is a chance to sort of undo that. 